I've been driving home for about 20 minutes thinking, there's no way I'm gonna share this video. But then I remembered how much frustration and trouble I had when I first started going outside to paint. And I thought, what the heck? I'm the only artist who struggles this much. Everyone else can do it so easily because not a ton of artists that I looked up to shared like their behind the scenes process and especially not their mistakes or like the really bad paintings. I would look at their Instagram feed and just see absolutely stunning, beautiful plein air paintings. And I know that's kind of naive because of course those artists have however many years, many, many years of practice behind them. So when I was first starting, there's no way I should have been comparing myself to that. But that's just what happens on social media. It's just so frustrating when you're first starting out. Since today is special, it's the summer solstice. It's one of my favorite days of the year. I stopped those negative thoughts and decided when I get home, I am going to edit this video and share it because I just think that it's better for other artists out there to see the truth <laughs> that there will always be times when you struggle, no matter how well you're doing in the studio, no matter how far you've come as an artist and how much you practice. I know that every artist is gonna have bad days so I don't want to hide all of my bad days. I'm not gonna share every single mistake or bad painting I do forever, but I think it's important to share it sometimes. And especially when I had the most amazing day at that location, I'm so insanely inspired. Like I want to go back to the studio and paint 50 paintings that I saw there. <laughs> Okay, so enough rambling. I am going to head home now and edit this video. And through the power of editing, you are now going to watch what I edit. So I have to admit that from the moment I got to this location, I was instantly scared to paint. It was just so overwhelmingly beautiful, um, but I'll talk about that in a little while. So of course, the moment I sit down and start to relax, it starts raining. I'm about to finish my snacks and it's time to paint. And I'm so intimidated <laughs> because I'm just in awe of the beauty right now and the colors. I'm. It doesn't seem real. <laughs> like there's, it almost seems like I have a filter over my eyeballs that's like increasing the saturation of the water, of the green that's on the cliffs. Plus, I just don't even know what I wanna paint. I wanna paint everything. I wanna paint the waves on the shore and the reflective sand and the beautiful cliffs coming down. And I wanna paint the rocks over there. And then I wanna climb way over there and paint the super distant cliffs and hills. <laughs> 
it's like so overwhelming right now. Okay, I thought about it for a while and what I think I'm going to do is wander. So no pressure to paint. I know I'm gonna paint eventually and so far I've only had one really short rain shower. A lot of times when I feel this overwhelming sense um, of like fear to start painting, it's because I, I'm afraid of missing out on something that I haven't seen yet and I've never been here before. So if I wander around and explore for like 20 minutes and I see all there is to see on the beach, then I'm more likely to pick a spot and be happy with that spot and just go for it. <laughs> So that's what's gonna happen. Time to explore a little bit and then find a spot to paint. Look at how neon green this is. That is so intense. up really quick and I'm gonna go to the cave. <laughs> right Looks like I won't be going in the cave but it's cool and maybe next time I come I will bring water shoes. amazing how much the colors change when it's cloudy versus super sunny. I love both. <laughs> I love this moodiness. All the gray makes the really intense colors pop out even more. Well, there's no sign of the clouds stopping. It just keeps getting darker and grayer. But I just I really want to paint, so I'm going to risk it. I'm going to set up over here because at least I can like hide next to these cliffs if I absolutely have to, like if it starts chucking it down. Um, plus this is an amazing view over here. <laughs> So let me show you what I brought. I have two portable palette micros. This is watercolor, this is gouache. This is my mixing space, so this is just palette paper taped to this board, this tray. I have a bunch of gouache tubes, my spray bottle, because that's very handy, my brushes, and these are actually the water containers that come with the portable painter, the regular size one. I realized today that these are absolutely perfect for this Pashad box because they fit right in there and I just squish them in there with the tray and I can put my brushes in that one or just have water in both of them, depends on what I'm doing. And they don't take up a lot of space, which is awesome because I used to put a bigger container of water in here and this would be like hanging out a lot more. So now it's a little bit more contained. And I just have a clamp that's holding my sketchbook to the top area. Um, I'm keeping it kind of flat today. This is what it looks like from the side. I have a shirt under there that kind of holds it up a little bit, but for the most part, it's almost completely flat. If I were standing up, I would keep it up at an angle so that it would be easier to paint. But when it's on my lap, it's just much easier to have it this way. Oh my God. 
I literally just set up um, all the, I just got set up to paint and the sun is glaring down on me again. And all the colors are different again. <laughs> I mean, I'm still gonna paint, but it's just like, this is such a huge struggle when I paint outside. The nice thing about having more sun is that I get more shadows, which is really fun to paint. When I first start the painting, I'm thinking about my underlayer or the color that's going to be on the base of the painting. And my personal preference is to use a very bright, intense color, maybe something that will complement colors I'll be using later on. So in this case, I'm going to be using a vibrant pink color. And I'm just using my watercolor and my gouache interchangeably. I'll add white if I want to desaturate it slightly. Um, so I'm, I'm actually going to be doing kind of a value study in a way as the underpainting. And then usually I squint and try to see where my darkest darks are first. still slightly transparent because I didn't use super thick gouache. I'd say this is about half watercolor, half gouache right now. But the whole point is just to get something down, something that I'm going to work on top of. And the only places I'm leaving pure white will be my um, super bright highlights. This is a bit of a different strategy than I've shown previously, but it's something I've been doing more and more, and I have so much fun with it. The sun is coming out now and causing all sorts of problems. <laughs> but since gouache is opaque, it doesn't matter. Like, we'll be able to paint over this, right? So for now, I'm just thinking about laying in my general values. I'm gonna have more contrast in the foreground that'll help kind of keep the focus in the foreground. So darker darks, whiter, brighter brights, <laughs> whiter whites. Um, and then the sky is definitely gonna be pretty pale. It's kind of hazy, but with the sun coming out, it seems to be clearing up a lot of that haze. I may get some stronger shadows and colors. Virtual Sarah here. Hello, everyone. <laughs> I'm doing a voiceover for some of the painting because while I was painting, I just started to get so anxious about not being able to do this location justice. And I was like really trying to focus. <laughs> and it's extremely difficult to focus uh, when I'm talking. So one thing that I was struggling with is that I made the classic plein air mistake of constantly adjusting my light uh, in my colors in the painting as the sun changed. So the sun every five minutes or so was going behind clouds and then coming back out. And every time that happens, the effects on the landscape are pretty drastic. And I love the effects in both situations, but yeah, the problem was I just kept changing my painting and that's like a huge no-no. Don't do that. <laughs> you need to pick your light situation. If you got there and you started painting and it was really bright and sunny, you have to remember how that looked instead of changing it throughout the painting. So for the most part, I did go with more of the sunny look in my painting. I was really trying to hold on to those bright summery colors and the and having fun with the highlights and the shadows and such. But occasionally I would sort of come back in and dull things down because that's what I was seeing when the clouds were out. And because I was second guessing myself like that a lot, I was not confident at all. So when I stopped talking, I was kind of thinking, well, this is just going to be a good practice painting. I'm definitely never going to share this. <laughs> and it's just one of those things that happens once in a while. I'm not trying to like put myself down or anything. This happens to every artist out there. It's just that I don't always share those moments because I definitely feel way more vulnerable when that happens to me. 
it's so silly to feel embarrassed about your painting because when you are learning, when you're on the path of discovery, mistakes are a huge part of the learning process, which is why I choose to share the bad with the good. And I'm not saying this painting is terrible. It's definitely not my best, but it's not my worst either. It's just that it was kind of a frustrating experience because I was struggling with that lighting and I was so overwhelmed by the beauty and I just wanted to capture it exactly as I felt when I was there. Uh, and when that doesn't happen on the canvas, I do tend to put myself down as an artist. And you know, that's just something I'm working on. <laughs> Some days I'm just stronger than others, I guess. And admittedly, as a YouTuber, I definitely feel even more pressure to always do a really good job. <laughs> It's not just for myself, but it's like when I know I'm going to film something, oh man, <laughs> the pressure goes way up. And so this kind of goes back to sharing the authentic experience, which I'm always reminding myself is my goal with my content online. I want to share the good, the bad, the struggles, the successes, <laughs> everything in between. Because when I die, like, what am I leaving behind? I don't just want to leave behind a portfolio of pretty images. I want to leave behind something a little bit deeper, a little bit more meaningful. Sharing a connection with other artists along the way is a huge driving force for me. It gives me so much energy and inspires me a ton. So I'm not trying to be morbid or anything. It's just something I think about. <laughs> I've been really into drawing almost with gouache, like doing little tiny lines and um, just like exaggerating little things as lines with a tiny brush like this. It's good because it reminds me of certain shapes. So like if I take this back to the studio and I want to paint it bigger, I look at these little lines and I'm like, oh yeah, that's right. There were like tons of little spiky bits or long striations in the rock and all of that. And it just exact, the fact that it's exaggerated makes um, that pop into my memory like really strong. So it's kind of fun. Plus it's useful, it's informative. I just added a glaze of like grayish blue gouache to this background hill because I just wanted to send it like really far away. Send it way in the background. A couple big sweeps of white on the clouds because that bit's a little distracting. Using bigger marks in the background helps me um, like with all the little marks in the foreground it's less distracting. I let it dry and I walked away for a while and I came back and I was like, okay, I know what I need to do. This is just way too distracting gonna darken it a little. Doing a glaze of like a peach tone over some of these rocks where the light is hitting them. Because um, I didn't go bright enough. I was just, I think I was just too scared. <laughs> and it also kind of solidifies them a little bit because they were all choppy before. And there's some big formations over there that I needed to capture. It makes more sense now. There's still some shadow, so I'm going to drop in some blue.
so as you can see I changed my composition so that it was more like I was over there looking straight down these cliffs um, from this view it was just so stretched out that I was kind of bored <laughs> so I wanted to draw each of these cliffs going back into the distance it's very messy, very playful. Okay. I have to admit, I hit a wall. Mental. Mental wall. I am completely <laughs> drained. I mean, I suddenly got so tired, I almost fell asleep on the rocks. It was really weird. But I'm glad I at least got that one painting in. I feel like this would be a good video for my Lessons Learned series, where I take what I learned here back to the studio and paint it again, and try to correct some of the things that I got wrong and, and just improve. So there might be a part two to this video. <laughs> Who knows? In this moment, though, I am just utterly exhausted. Uh, I have no more spoons. So, I am going back to the car for the long drive home. But I'm probably going to stop along the way and get some ice cream as a little solstice treat. If you enjoyed this video, a thumbs up really helps me out. And feel free to check out some of my other plein air videos if you had fun today. All right, everybody, I will see you soon. Take care.